So in the last video, we took a look at using uh, bend markers to do quantizing. We took a look at a multi-track drum performance. Um, full disclaimer, I've been pretty vocal about this. I don't actually use bend markers when I'm doing multi-track quantizing. In fact, my first preference, no matter what the material is, is always slicing. Sometimes for legato stuff, you can't really get away with slicing and getting a clean crossfade for it to sound right. So sometimes in the cases where you're dealing with a legato signal, something that has a sustain and it's connected and you kind of have to ballpark where it is, I find that it's much easier to use bend markers. But I wanted to take a look at using slip editing or doing uh, editing with bend markers and the different ways that we can do this. So we have a little snippet here. This is from a Fat Hat track uh, that I mixed called Fat Funk. It was a demo song a long time ago in Studio One. I mixed the Fat Hat album, uh, I think it was last year or maybe a little bit earlier than that. And, it, and it's coming out, I guess, at some point. Um, let's have a quick listen. I'm going to turn the click off. Oh, first thing I'll say is the, the the drummer and the bass player for this band, they're phenomenal. And they lock really, really good. But let's say that we wanted to make an adjustment to the timing. I want to explore two different ways that we could do that. So first things first, I made a little marker point of the only thing that I could really hear that was maybe like a tiny bit ahead. Okay. So, arguably, if I wanted to adjust this performance over here, let's take a look at how we would do that. It's always good to have a visual indication. So, if you have a track, like for example, a snare track or a kick track where, where you can see where things are, that might help. In this case, I have a room track, which is kind of close, and I probably also have an overhead, which might be a little bit earlier in time, be just because of the way that it goes. So, maybe we'll take, for example, overhead left, and we'll bring that down here. And let's bring these two into view, full view. So if I wanted to quantize this, there's two approaches that I would use. The first one and the one that I would always choose first would definitely be slicing. So that's a matter of just basically you're making a selection. We can double click to split this. And then basically you could just either, you could use these shortcuts that you have by double clicking to make a split, or you could move to the split tool over here. I'm also gonna remove myself from the grid temporarily. And what I would do is I would take a look at this whole performance, I'd play it back, we'll solo the overhead left and the bass. Okay. So you can hear that this happens slightly later and the bass happens here. So I've already made a cut on this side. So the first thing that I would attempt to do is I would probably just make a little snip here and then I would see whether I can hold down these two modifiers and I could see whether I could adjust this edit. Oops, not what I wanted to do. Let's see if I can move back to my pointer tool over here. And also, I think we need to uh, make our clip gain line disappear so we're not conflicting with any tools. First thing I would do is I would just kind of like slide this over like this and I would put this a little bit in line. And then here, basically what you want to do in terms of your edit points, I'm just going to zoom in, is if you move this boundary over till you start to see the transient that's here, we can start to see that as I move it over, I don't want it to happen twice. So I'm going to pull it back a little bit before, give myself enough to be able to fade, and then I'm going to click the X. And now I can adjust this crossfade until right before that thing, that, that additional transient pulls up. And I've just put this a little bit more in line with the drums. So to me, that sounds invisible. And then we make sure that we have a little bit of a crossfade at the end over here, that there's no overlap. So that is one way to approach it. And that's the way that I would usually do it is just putting a little snip and then you just plain, you add a crossfade and you are literally just playing with your edit points to make sure that you, you don't pull it back so that you have two double transients that happen. Just pull it back right to there. And then of course, once you have that done, you can slip the contents like this and you're just kind of like, I don't necessarily need to have them exactly equal, but I just maybe want to split the difference a little bit. So that is one approach. Let's back up in terms of, back up in a few steps. What I'm going to do actually to make this a little bit easier is um, we have uh, clip versions. I'm going to turn this into a brand new clip version, which is something that they added recently. And what this means is that I can treat individual clips. I could have bend markers on just a clip, or I could have a specific gain clip gain adjustments on just one clip, but it's not affecting everything. So now that this is a, a new clip, you can see that this has a different number than the rest. Now, in terms of the transient detection, there's two ways you can do it. You can either detect the transients by opening up this bend marker tool over here, 
and then we could analyze this. And now it's analyzed the transients for us. Or quite simply, I could just add them manually. So I could lock down some, some detection points. Let's see what happens with the detection points that, that it analyzed for us, okay? And then maybe I wanna get rid of some of them that I don't really think are needed. Now this particular part of the performance over here, um, I don't want this to remain, because when I move a bend marker, unless you have something pinned down, it's gonna move it upstream and downstream. So let's get rid of this, and maybe I'm gonna lock it down here at the very end, and let's get rid of this. Now if I was doing this in this particular context, I might say that I'm really happy with the first part of this, which was over here. So this, this part over here, everything from 15.4 right to before this. Let's say that I'm happy with that. Then I would just take this and I'm just pulling this over. So just this one part. Okay, and then I would listen to that in isolation. And I want to make sure that I'm not getting any artifacts. Now, the other thing I want to do is double check to make sure that I'm in the right uh, mode for whatever I'm doing. So this is currently in the drum mode. We also have sound and we have solo and we have tape. So for sound, think of this as like polyphonic. And then for solo elastic pro, think of that as monophonic. So a guitar, um, like a bass guitar, a vocal, anything like that that's a monophonic sound that you're not having multiple strings together. So I'm gonna change the algorithm on this so that it's using that. So that is one approach, is just literally grabbing this one point over here and dragging this back. Now if, for example, let's, let's unwind this a little bit and let's make sure that we turn our algorithm back to monophonic. Let's say that I wanted to maintain the relative timing between these. Then we can basically select these and then I can move these together. So I'm maintaining the relative timing between the two of these, right? As opposed to just changing the one timing. Or if, for example, I wanted to cha change all three of these, but I wanted to maintain the relative timing here. Now if I pull, notice I'm pulling all three of these, but I'm maintaining that relative timing between the two in front. So depending on what you want to do, slicing and using bend markers and depending on the material, whether it's percussive stuff where you have little gaps where you can get away with crossfades and uh, overlaps and getting rid of them, or whether you need that control when you're working with like legato type phrases and things where you don't have the gaps and you may have to kind of ballpark and guesstimate it, then you can just place a bend marker, lock it down upstream and downstream, place a bend marker and just drag it around where it sounds until it sounds good. Now, the one last thing I'll say about bend markers is whether you've created them manually or whether you've used a detection point, if you hold down the alter option modifier, let me deselect this for a moment. I'm going to click this one and hold down the alter option modifier. Let's say that I wanted this bend marker to actually be here. If I hold this down, notice now that I can slip it without actually changing the contents and without actually stretching. I'm just changing the lo actual location of the bend marker now. So, that is using slicing versus bend marker workflow for quantizing different sections of audio in Studio One. I hope you got something from this, and we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.